Hey guys, and welcome back to the Physique Development Podcast. Before we get into things, I would absolutely love if you could like, comment, subscribe, leave a review, depending on the platform that you're watching this on, but we would greatly appreciate it. So Alex, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. It was crazy. Um, we had our best friend's wedding, and we got to see Brandon McKenzie finally tie the knot after um, them having you know dated for as long as they have. And uh, it was really special to be able to be there for that moment as a whole. But um, on the flip side of that, we had the longest nights <laughs> of our life in, uh, and for a while. Um, we are by nature asleep by 10 o'clock. Yes. <laughs> in bed by 9.30, 9.45, we're asleep by 10. Um, from Wednesday until Saturday, we were out until one or two o'clock in the morning yeah, every night. Past midnight, which is very out of character for us. So my body was was screaming at me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Both of our bodies were screaming at us. Um, I was exhausted, but I was truly just running off of excitement and adrenaline every day um, for them as a whole. Um, so when we we drove on Wednesday night uh, th through the evening, it was like a three and a half hour trip, and then it was, took us a little bit to calm down on that Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, we uh, went out to a bar with them after the rehearsal dinner. Mm -hmm. And then Friday was the wedding and we were on the dance floor doing our thing. We were tearing it up. <laughs> Sue and I are not dancers. <laughs> <laughs> but we were for Brandon and we McKenzie. Uh, Brandon McKenzie, dancers. Uh -huh. Brandon McKenzie's family, dancers. Brandon and McKenzie's rest of their wedding party, <laughs> dancers. Dancers. <laughs> um, yeah. us, Alex and not Sue. Not dancers. There was even people who were like professional dancers there and yeah. we're sitting there like, all right. Well, I'm just gonna keep on grooving. I know. We we tried to we tried to pull it together. We did our best. Greg helped you get loose yeah. a little bit. Greg, if you're listening, thank you for <laughs> <laughs> helping me loosen up my shoulders a little bit. And those um, hips. And the hips, yeah. And so then we uh made the trip back on on Saturday and I feel like we're still recovering a little bit um uh, from the trip as a whole, but it was it was fantastic. Yeah, I think that one thing that honestly could be beneficial to talk about is how we structure things with our schedule being different mm -hmm. and and how we did what was going to be best for us, but also the circumstances at hand. So, for example, starting with Wednesday, we left. Uh, we planned to leave around 2.30 because we were going to spend some time with Brandon McKenzie that evening. Their day went a little crazy, 100% understandable. Anyone who has had their own wedding knows the week of the wedding is insane. So we ended up leaving, like Alex said, at like 7.30 at night. And so that allowed us, honestly, to get a ton of work done. And we also made time to go on a walk and train because we we knew we were likely not going to train from the time that we are out of town. And so that's one thing that we did to like show up for ourselves of like, instead of hitting the road and getting there, let's go ahead and train and do the stuff, clean up the house, make sure everything's in good order for when we come back. So I was really proud of us for that. We did a lot of good there. And then we also packed food. So even though we knew we were going to be eating out, enjoying the wedding food, the rehearsal dinner, uh, I also knew that we first, we don't like going and grabbing food when we're out uh, and the concept of like when you have a really tight time window and you're starving and it's like now I need to like leave the hotel and go get something and come back and so it was extremely helpful to have food prepared and to have those in the moments that we didn't already have something planned for. Um, but since we got there so late on Wednesday, we took some time to wind down, and then we did sleep in on Wednesday later than we normally would have. So for many on people Thursday. on Thursday, yes, on the you might have not. Uh, a lot of people might not label that as sleeping in, but for us it was. Of we normally are getting up around five in the morning, five or six, and we slept I think until around eight um, to give us some time to recover. So that's one thing that we normally try to do. Sometimes it's not. Uh, able to, but if we are going to be up later of recognizing we're likely going to be waking up later because we need to take care of our bodies. Uh, what else did we do that uh, you felt like was really positive when it comes to the rest of our schedule? I think that just being vocal with our clients was big because obviously we still have things to attend to on Thursday and on Friday um, with clients. Thankfully, we didn't have any competitors. So it wasn't like Saturday we were working with someone on, on show day, which would have been very challenging. <laughs> um, 
but I think that just being vocal with clients, everybody being very understanding and, um, you know, expressing to them what our situation was, keeping everyone in the loop. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that a lot of people run into the situation where they are, uh, maybe the coach who's working with the clients, they get anxious and they don't like, they're already upset with themselves because they're running behind and then they don't vocalize it because it's like, I'm just going to avoid it and not talk about it so that I don't have to worry about it. And then it just makes the issue worse. Whereas if you're just talk up or speak up about it, um, oftentimes it's, it's a non-issue type thing. Yeah. So that was big for us. Yeah. Well, and we told all of our clients the week before, um, and I even mentioned it to my clients, like, Hey, later in the month is McKenzie's wedding. Like I, I'm first very excited. So they would just hear me chat about it. Um, but the week before we let people know we are going to be out of town like Wednesday through Saturday. And then I had my check-ins push forward. So I had them all check in Monday and Tuesday. Um, so I was able to get through a bunch of that and then just be able to respond to some miscellaneous emails because I wanted to be as present as possible on Thursday, Friday. Um, and I knew I wouldn't have a ton of capacity to give to other people. And so truly, like you said, just speaking up, letting them know as well as looking ahead and knowing what was going to be best for me and my schedule of realistically, there was no way I could work on Friday because we were getting ready the whole day being in the wedding. Now, if we were just attending the wedding, that different. would look different. Yeah. But being in the wedding, there wasn't a lot of space to do anything. And so being able to know like, hey, this is kind of what to expect. And that comes, I think, from knowing yourself, knowing what your capacity is, as well as understanding what your schedule is. Um, and so then even going going into Saturday after the wedding, we had been up. It was a crazy long day, crazy fun day. But Saturday, we were both beat. And we just like slept and stayed in bed until like we we really needed to. Uh, and I think that was really positive for us because I know both of us could have been like, we need to get up, we need to get work done because we kind of had two or three days of work that we didn't get to do. But we really listened to ourselves and to our body of what we needed and knew that it wasn't going to be beneficial to push the envelope and get up and go. Um, our bodies need that recovery. Yeah. And I think um, one thing from being a young entrepreneur and coaching, I would just do it because I said I was going to do it type situation. No matter what, I was always going to do it, no matter the quality of the work as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that as I've gotten older, I've had more repetitions. I hold, and I've, I've talked to my clients about this and I, I've talked about it maybe on the podcast before, but um, I have a very stringent rule with myself of just 80% or better quality um, within the work that I'm doing. And so like when I am going through my work day, I will um, rate, I, I track by the hour. And so I, I rate each hour of work, whether that be from an efficiency or quality standpoint focus. Um, and if that is ranking for an eight out of 10 always, then I go on and, and work another hour. If I'm under that eight out of 10, then I get up and, and reassess of like, why was that not an eight out of 10? What needs to change? And then I go back to work once that's established. And so in that scenario, I was not able to give at, at minimum of an 80% across those three metrics. Thus, like my clients pay too much money to not have the premium mm -hmm. effort out of me, premium quality out of me. So I'm not going to give them less because I'm not you know prepared necessarily to give it to them. Whereas if I wait, I can give them that quality of service every single time. Mm -hmm. And I think that my clients specifically really appreciate that rather than it being like, you got it to me within 24 hours, no matter if it was a you know, shortened um, check-in response or not, like I'm giving you the best of me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I started off with like, well, I, I think all of us are, a lot of us as online coaches started off saying that people had 24 seven access to yeah. us or like you would always respond. And I realized that that was just not realistic. And so then I changed changed it to like 24 hours that within 24 hours that you would get a response. But it seemed like that was putting me in a bind of I wasn't able to always get everything done um, and be able to do the quality of work that I wanted. Most of the time was good. But then there was that sliver of time that I wasn't able to do it. And so I moved my response time to you're going to hear from me within 24 to 48 hours. I still have the expectation of myself to get back to someone right. within 24 hours but I don't beat myself up like I used to when it pushes closer to that 48 hours because I always know the quality of service is going to be what they want and exactly what you said of my clients are going to much rather have a response that is 
40 hours and it's going to be a full response, everything they expect, than something that's within 20 hours and it's just a BS, here you go, I answered, like you can't say anything. Uh, yeah, I think that the, and this is the fulfilling part of our job mm -hmm. is to, um, like you're going to feel significantly more fulfilled from doing quality work rather than just doing the work and getting caught up in like, I have this many things on my to-do list, I have to cross all these things off. Like, you can use laundry for an example. Like if you do laundry and then don't fold it and just kind of like throw it into the drawer, like that's not very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. But if you do the laundry, you fold it, you uh, hang things up, you put things neatly into their drawer, like that is a much more fulfilling and like uplifting process for that laundry. And you look at like doing chores like that significantly different when you just do things to your best ability all the time rather than just like doing them to do them. How many of you guys feel attacked right now by Alex and his <laughs> laundry analogy? <laughs> but it's so true. Like, yeah. I hate when I start laundry and I don't finish it. Or if I, I like almost try, I try to almost never start laundry if I know I'm not going to have time to like fold it and truly get it done. Um, and now there's always times that come up that, you know, that just doesn't, I shouldn't say there's always times, there's going to be times that come up that that doesn't happen. But I try to make that rule for myself because I know how it makes me feel as well as laundry that sat in the laundry in the dryer or in a basket just doesn't hit the same as laundry that was promptly folded or promptly put up, um, not only within like the feeling of organization and knowing that you accomplished and did a quality job, but also like your clothes just don't feel as clean or as like exciting yeah. to wear because it's like, this is still kind of wrinkled, but I just washed it. Yeah. And I think that how you look is is plays into how you feel and how you feel is going to play a role into how you perform within anything. And so if you're putting on some wrinkly ass t-shirt with like, cre like horribly creased pants or whatever it is, like you're not going to show up that well. Like if, if you're not, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that I've had such a deep belief and I know for a self, for a fact, for myself, it plays such a large role in just like how I feel and, and having my barber appointments and like, um, my shoes being clean, all of my clothes being, uh, freshly steamed or what have you. Um, I'm a little neurotic on that front, but it does help tremendously for me. Yeah, I will say I believe there are exceptions and myself is sort of one of them. I have started to lean more towards what you're saying. For good reason. <laughs> but because I've been trash talked enough <laughs> to, into it. Uh, but I like vividly remember you being like, I don't know how you're as productive as you are wearing yes. the clothes that you are. And I used to even wear even more oversized and frumpy clothes than I do now. But I will say, since you've changed your clothing <laughs> attire, how much better has your work quality and efficiency and all that then? Uh, well, we also have someone else here during the day, so I can't be a complete oh, slob. I'm just so. going to completely just shift that off to Miguel. Like Miguel <laughs> being here has improved everything. It, so. it has, honestly. And he is part, <laughs> but your clothing choices are even greater. <laughs> Which I want to do a podcast and we're going to try and get it done before the end of the year. Um, either setting it up here or going somewhere else to get Miguel on the podcast to talk about what it's been like having him here the past year. I think that's going to be really fun for you guys to hear. Um, and just to be able to see him in front of the camera, since he's always behind the camera, I'm excited for you guys to meet him or get to know him more because he's awesome. That'd be very cool. Speaking of clothes, because I know you wanted to talk about this, we got to stop at our friend's um, boutique, mm -hmm. him and her. Um, while we were there, it's we, it was a store that we loved before we left. Um, just to see Ross and Diana was fantastic. And um, one thing that Ross always pushes me towards, I like to have my clothes a little bit more baggy. Mm -hmm. I feel more comfortable. You look jacked right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but Ross always pushes me to go the size down so I look more jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Which also, I will say, multiple people this weekend told Alex, like, this is the biggest I've seen you. Like, this is the most jacked I've seen you. This is the leanest I've seen you. Like, a lot of comments like that, which always make me happy because I see it and I tell him that. But it's good to have that affirmation from other people to be like, see, I'm not just blowing smoke at you. Shout out to Coach Adam. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, too. Yeah, shout out to me, but shout out to Coach Adam. Um, but anyway, this shirt that I have on, for those who are watching, uh, is is one of them that um, I have a handful of Fahardi um 
flannels like this, but they're all XLs. And so Ross was pushing me and said that the large looked better on me from like a shape standpoint. Um, so I'm rocking the large today. Yeah. It's a little bit more snug than I'm accustomed to. Good. My wife loves it. So that means I love it. Um, <laughs> He's also been showing his ankles more because I made a comment about like, <laughs> I love seeing, I love like pants that are just like right above the ankle and you get to see a little bit more. I love like the no sock look with like a loafer as well for men. So Alex has been wearing some like joggers and pulling them up or they've been shorter and showing off some ankles. Some of his pants, like his dress pants have been showing off little ankles. So she wants to take a lot of credit for this uh, attire change, but you know, maybe I also like how it looks. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you don't like how it looks, but I thought it was funny because I no, mentioned I'm, like I'm you wore you a pair of joggers and I was like, I like seeing your ankles. And then like the next three days, your ankles were out. And I was like, he's trying to tell me something. Yeah. But yeah, if you are interested in him and her, we'll have uh, linked below because they can ship it um, to you. They have a lot of great brands and him, it started as just the gentleman's boutique and then they added on her over this past year. And if you're in the Louisville area, there's a location on Frankfurt Avenue. There's a location on Pearl Street in New Albany. And then they also just recently opened at the paddock shops. So you have three different locations to go through and they have a lot of great brands. Like Alex said, they have Fahardi. They have Mizzen and Maine. Um, they have Stance. They have Cuts. They have uh, Viore. They have Free People. Look at Steve Sue is Madden. just constantly doing the free shout outs. <laughs> like we've talked about this on multiple episodes. Sue, as soon as she likes something and feels passionate about it, she just lets everybody know. I do. I let them all know. They also, have, what are those shoes? The DC shoes that are supposed to be like walking on clouds. I haven't personally tried them. So I, I can't either. speak towards that, but I've heard a lot of positive things about them. Um, but it was incredible to get to see Ross and Diana and also incredible because right next door to the location on Pearl Street is Diana's other business, Main Alley, which is a, a extension hair salon. And uh, while I get my extensions here from Nonia at Authentic Strands, um, she free washed shout my out. free shout another out. Shout out. Another <laughs> shout out. Um, Diana and the girls at Main Alley washed my hair for the wedding, which was great. I got a little blowout, so I didn't have to wash it myself. So incredible. Love that for me. <laughs> what are we talking about today? Oh, we are talking about, you know, life, just how it goes. Uh, we're talking about all the brands I love. Um, no, we're talking about uh, kind of how we create the schedule that works for us and uh, how we got to that point, really, of figuring out not only what works for us, but what doesn't work for us and what we don't like um, and how we, we built that all out. Yeah, I think that as we build out our own schedule and um, as entrepreneurs who did not have a, uh, well, you had a, a sibling who was doing it, but not in the same mm -hmm. realm type situation um, and you know, working from home from the very beginning and trying to figure out like what's going to work for me. And I think that many people go to uh, different morning routines and they watch on YouTube and then they watch the routines of like people they look up to on YouTube and um, they try to mimic those things. And then they come to find like, this is, I'm wasting my, this does not align with me whatsoever. This aligns for Mark Cuban. But mm -hmm. like, I'm not Mark Cuban. <laughs> I wish I was Mark Cuban. <laughs> um, so it, it's it's one of those things that it comes from such a level of trial and error. And early on, you don't realize that. You're, you're kind of in this state of trying. And it's like, well, it works for someone that I know is successful. Mm -hmm. Why is this not working for me? Like, why is this not doing the same thing for me? I feel like it is more distracting. I feel like it is... Uh, like less efficient and so on and so forth. And so um, I think that the trial and error aspect and not beating yourself up over the moments of trying different things to find what works for you um, is, is really important as you're trying to establish that routine. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, and I think that one thing I struggled with was it not even mimicking yours all of the time. Right. And and looking and being like, Alex is really successful. He expresses that these things really help him. And me giving them a try, which what I do want to vocalize is 
give them a try. It does happen through trial and error. So don't feel like, okay, I already know that's not going to work for me. Or Sue and Alex just said to not just copy everyone's morning routine, but you have to figure out what does work for you. And so with that, I tried a lot of the things that you were doing, and some of them do work for me, but others don't. And so I kind of had to figure out what that routine is. And even with, um, like, as life has changed over the past few years, the routine and what suits me and kind of where my mental capacity capacity can go has changed as well. And even talking about this past weekend of some things that we did to set ourselves up for success or when we realize like, hey, we've been out a lot later, instead of pushing ourselves to get up at the same time in the morning, it's a lot of recognizing what your capacity is, as well as how long it takes you to do things. So what's actually realistic within that time frame, um, And then being able to see like, okay, what all's on my plate that needs to fit into this day? Because I felt like prior to this year, or even at the beginning of this year, I had a really hard time scheduling meetings and appointments. I always felt like things were either running into each other or I just had a hard time with them all in my day. And I feel like I'm just now getting to such a good spot of knowing how to schedule things within my day and within my week and knowing when I need to talk to someone about pushing something or changing the time. Because I used to hold myself to the standard of, I told them this time I can't ever change it because I committed to this time, which a lot of the times I I do keep the times of my meetings and I schedule them for that reason. But recognizing like life comes up and other things might take priority. So I had a meeting scheduled for Wednesday this week and I asked the person if they could push it to next week because while I still want to take the meeting, when I look at my priority list, it's a little bit lower on the priority. And so I don't need to force myself into taking that meeting. I can ask in the shift. They were fine being flexible, super happy. And I was able to really honor what I needed and what my schedule needed within that day. Yeah. I think that you hear the, uh, the phrase of, um, what's, the thief of joy. What's comparison the is comparison the thief is joy. the thief of joy. And I think that as we're talking through this, it really is more so expectations mm -hmm. are the thief of joy by the now expectations can be a very positive thing. But at the same time, like with that meeting, you're just placing an expectation on yourself that it has to be at this time because you you already committed to it where it's like, in reality, it's going to be a better meeting if you push it off. Mm -hmm. And so alleviating that expectation on yourself allowed for you to have a better meeting, a better experience, um, whoever the meeting's with, it could be a, you know, a first time meeting that person. That first impression means a lot. And so putting yourself into a position where it's going to be the most successful for you rather than it being like, I have to stick to my word 24 seven, all topics, never stray away from that. Um, it's just a much more you know, beneficial, beneficial place to be. And I think that goes in line with you saying you used to force yourself to stay at your desk until you got yes. things done. And it was just an expectation you set on yourself. No one else told you you had to do it. Well, I, I think that it really stems from like childhood of, well, I can't go play with my friends until I'm done with my homework. Work. And so it, it was always something where I just had to like sit and stare at it, no matter if I was in a place to do it or not. Mm, like I sense. had to sit and stare at it really up until college. And so uh, that was just kind of like my parents' rules. And I don't think that they were wrong in doing yeah. that. Um, it was just unfortunate that I continued to carry that as my like cursor, if you will, or like the thing that um, I had to keep doing. Um, and I just you know made it a decision one day that that was not what I had to do. And um, that was one big part to my routine of you know, going back to the reference of um, scoring my hours. I, I don't think that everyone needs to look at their day and kind of micromanage hour after hour of like, what, what would you rate that? And it's not like in the moment I am um, rating it. It's more intuitive at this point because I've done it for so long. Like I know what was an eight and I know what was below that. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to understand when that timer goes off, okay, can, should I keep going or do I need to, to pull back and get a drink of water, go outside, go on a walk, go train, go eat? You know, what is the, the thing that needs to happen now? And it has become much more intuitive. At the beginning, I was, you know, micromanaging it and really looking at what are the things that are falling off and why am I rating this the way that I am type situation. 
situation. Um, and then I guess that kind of takes me into the the next point that I take it as as three scorecards as well. So I, I, I rate how my morning was and that's its own day. And then I rate how my afternoon was and that's its own day. And then my evening and the task that those three things have are significantly different. Um, but I have a standard to those things and kind of taking it as like, can I get three W's today or two and one loss or, you know, so, because I think that a lot of people fall into this situation of like my morning got thrown off and it didn't go as it was supposed to. Now my whole day is garbage mm -hmm. type situation. And so I think that cutting it into three scorecards, at least for myself was so super duper helpful. Um, for me not to get married to whatever happened at different sections of my day, because it also each of those different portions of my day call for a different version of myself. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the deep work that I can do in the morning is not what I can do in the afternoon. Like my afternoons are more so of, of working with meetings and doing things that are either I'm leaving the house or I'm, um, you know, just engaging with people more. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the mornings I could be at my desk for three or four hours over that time frame, And I'm not really talking a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of reading. I'm doing a lot of writing. I'm doing things that call for my very, very immediate attention. And then in the evenings, it's, it's about disconnecting. It's about connecting with, with you, disconnecting from my work, yeah, yeah. connecting with the dogs, connecting with you and allowing for myself to recharge the batteries. And so, you know, um, last week I had a day where I crushed my morning, I crushed my afternoon, but sometimes that leads me to a situation where I'm so work driven all day and just manhandled morning and afternoon that it's hard for me to turn off in that evening section. And so then I end up taking an L because it's like, I thought about work until the moment my head hit the pillow and kept myself up because I was still thinking about work type situation. And so I think that that's a you know, helpful tool for me as well. Yeah. And how much do you feel like within like, I have to sit at my desk, there was also possibly some guilt attached oh, yeah. of like these clients are paying me to do a job and if they see me on Instagram yes. or we have clients a lot in town when we lived in Louisville if they see me out and about and their check-in is still in my inbox or if I go and train and their check-in is still in my inbox like what kind of coach am I mm -hmm. that was the worst yeah it kind of felt like um when you had check-ins coming in it was almost as if each person was just staring at you mm -hmm. it felt that way yes Yes. Until you got the response to them, they were kind of just like, um, hello, where is my response? And I will say like when we were starting and had a significantly lower you know, price point, that kind of thing, that clientele like actually existed. Mm -hmm. Like the, the fear of that was not unwarranted. There were people that treated it like that, that were, that were just kind of mean, honestly, yeah. um, that would see, um, me post that I was training in the middle of the day and be like, where's my check-in response? Or like, did you get my check-in? Yeah. And they know they that, know that I got sent. their check-in. Yes. And, I and it hasn't even been like 12 hours. Right. Not even close. Yeah. It could be just three or four hours. Yeah. And um, that was a really challenging part of mm -hmm. early on coaching. I can say with so much happiness that I have not had a client like that in a very long time. Now it's taken a while for me to rewire my brain to realize like, hey, they understand like just because let's say my norm is to get back within 24 hours and maybe I am edging more towards that 48 hours, I'm still within the window that I told them. And again, be, even though I hold my standard to that sooner time, that doesn't mean that I'm giving them less of a service by going to that closer to that full time. And I think I had to mentally accept that instead of being like, they're staring at my story or they're looking at what I'm doing and judging how I'm spending my time. But taking the understanding of like, people have their day to do as they wish and what serves them. And that's going to look different for each person. So there's people that are going to get all of their work done before they have any play time, so to speak. Or there's going to be people that have multiple breaks throughout the day and maybe they work later into the evening. And I think I had to come to that realization as well as the shift in clientele as a whole. Um, but that was definitely difficult for me. And we used to kind of chain ourselves to our oh, desk, 100%. especially in the old house. And we make ourselves miserable. Oh yeah. In 2020 and 2021, we... I wouldn't say as much in 2021, but we just pulled ourselves like, yeah, I guess it was 2018. It'd be, 19 and, it'd be 
It'd be 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Yeah. And then some into 21. Yeah. Where we really just chained ourselves to our desk and we would feel bad by taking time for ourselves. But I love, like, especially this year, you've gotten so much better personally at walking away from your desk when you know you don't have something left to give. And that's what used to, like, drive me mad for you because I knew that you were just hurting and, like, pushing yourself. And I admire that. And I think that it was beneficial in that time time when we we needed momentum we needed to prove to ourselves that we were like dedicated and like we needed to work hard right i think that was all needed to at least for me to become the person i am and to realize what i have uh but there is a time and place for that and i'm no longer in that time or place and well i don't think that it's that you're no longer in that time or place it's that the hard work and the attention is just needed differently than what that at that time because it was just like at that time it was just check-ins yeah that is it true was, it was just check-ins and content creation and doing everything at that desk every day. Whereas now we have just a lot more things to attend to that we're, we're recording this podcast. We're uh, recording for YouTube. You have so many meetings with, you know, all kinds of different people on a regular basis. And it's just like the demands are different because I certainly don't want it to get twisted that the, uh, you know, the work ethic aspect is, is different because I would say that this has been the most demanding year as a whole by a long shot. It's just that you continue to evolve and get more efficient with the task that at one time may have taken you 30 minutes to complete a task. Now it may be only 10 because you've gotten tremendously better. Like Mm -hmm. you think about over the last eight years, thousands of check-ins have been answered by each of us. And in that time frame, like the amount of time that it took me to do a check-in at the very beginning and the amount of time that it takes me to do a check-in even better now Mm -hmm. is substantially different Mm -hmm. um, for good reason. Like I, I, if, if I didn't, if that didn't happen, that would be a problem. That Mm -hmm. would be me not getting better at my expertise. The thing that I'm being paid to do, I'm not getting better at. That's a problem. And so um, I think that it's, yeah, I I see where you're coming from. Yeah. And I appreciate that clarification. I guess what I was speaking to more is like that mindset was needed at that time and that mindset isn't needed now. But I 100% agree with you that the work ethic and the demand of this year is the highest it's ever been, but we are working a lot smarter and we're paying attention to what we need. And what I'm speaking to within like you walking away from your desk of knowing like, hey, I have three check-ins left or whatever, however many check-ins left, do I just finish them to say they're done? Or you recognize you're like, I'm gassed for the day, I'm done. Instead of of like forcing yourself just to be at your desk for a certain amount of time to say that you are at your desk a certain amount of time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think that, um, you know, within within that, that's been one of the best things for my personal mental health as a, as a whole of just being able to, like previously, I would make myself sit there until um, I'd get there, I'd start work at 5, 5.30, like we, like we do. And then I'd sit there until 10 o'clock at night because I'm like, I have to finish it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would go from an efficiency of whatever it was to, I was doing like one check in an hour Mm -hmm. because I'm just like pulling teeth. And then I would like force myself to do the check in, get the response. And I was like, so proud that I did it. I'm like, I did it. And then I'd get distracted for 30 (laughs) to 45 minutes. And I would like in the inter, like in the, uh, in between the time of being distracted, I would be taking the notes for the check-in, but I'm also still distracted. And so I'm kind of doing both. And then I'm like, I have to record this voice memo. And I'd sit there and wouldn't record the voice memo. And I'm like, you just have to record the voice memo. And then it'd be another hour goes by. And I'm like, two check-ins in two hours is not, ain't it. Mm -hmm. Like that's impossible. You gotta be, you know, it's not worth it. And so then it was like, once I came to the realization and realized the time constraint and then it being like, well, I can do significantly better work in the morning. Um, just let me sleep and get some coffee in me and I'll be ready to rock again. Um, it was a no brainer. It was like, I can't believe you forced yourself to do this for so long for literally like less output or Mm -hmm. or less quality or what have you of the work itself, less fulfillment and enjoyment of it all as well. Um, And so, you know, this year has been a big year for that. And now I'm to a point where it's kind of second nature is like, I'm only giving my, my absolute best and no one's receiving anything less than my 
most effort into their check-in and those different aspects. And I have enjoyed work so much more. Yeah, I was just going to bring up fulfillment because you went through a phase for a little bit of just being like, I'm not super fulfilled in my work. And then getting to a point where you're like, oh, I'm so much more fulfilled when I truly just, just do what I love. Do what I love. Do what I love and and be able to look at every issue and like figure it out mm -hmm. and and not trying to like rush through and just give quick points. Like I'm I'm here to work with you on the topic and really dive in. And that's something that I have, you know, refound over this year, I feel like, um, which has been so fun. Yeah. Um and so, and, and the thing is, is I, I seek out the more complex cases, <laughs> I, the more difficult, the more enjoyable, you know, to me type thing. And so, um, yeah, Looks got a lot of those type works. of cases. This year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so with that, one thing I did want to be able to note was with that of sitting at your desk and having those check-ins and I did that too. So it definitely wasn't just Alex. Um, you weren't getting quality time off. Yeah. And so then you weren't getting the most restful time when you were away from work and then you would get back to work and not be able to like give it your all. And I think that's another big change is we've really adopted and a quote that's like it literally sits on the bottom of my computer screen is quality time off leads to quality time on. And it's helped me so much to recognize like there's days where I walk away from my desk and I didn't accomplish everything that I needed to. And those days, of course, still get to me. I'm a human being, but I'm so much better at recognizing like, hey, take this time off. Don't sit here and dwell on it. Don't sit here and make yourself feel bad or make yourself feel guilty. You're going to get to it in the morning. The day didn't go as planned. Like reflect on what you need to learn from this, but take that quality time off and don't drive yourself crazy from it. So when you do get back to your desk in the morning, you can feel really good about the work that you're putting forward. And I will say as well that you have to be cognizant of how repetitive this is being. So mm -hmm. like if you're running into the situation of every day, you're not getting your things done, like that's, that's a problem. Yeah, great you point. need to, you need to evaluate what's going on and where you need to either pull the reins back or get better at whatever you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Like you either need to be more efficient with your time, be more diligent with your time, be more focused with your time. Cause if you're just getting to the end of the day and you're having to constantly reach out to whoever, you know, you're attending to and being like, Hey, I got an, I need another day. I need another day. And then every week you're just like, I need another day. It's like, that is a, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what we're talking about here. Of just like, everyone should give you grace all the time. Yeah, definitely not. Um, because- <laughs> You should be held to a standard. Yeah, you know, 99% of the time, everything is punctual, everything's on time, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's what earns you the trust from a customer standpoint within us and, and the clients that we work with. That's what earns us the opportunity to when things do not go according to plan and we need a little bit of extra time that we're granted that like it's it's understood the grace is there because it's been either given to them in a scenario that they've had or it's been earned from them because you've shown up time and time again and done exactly what you said you're going to do and so that's one thing that um you have to pay attention to and you know, in our in our field from a client standpoint you have a new client like it's just really not a time you haven't earned the ability to have that grace mm -hmm. and so you may have to spend more time with them of hey I understand you just started, but this is the scenario at hand and I need just a little bit of extra time. This is not the norm. I understand that I had put expectations in place that are not being met right now and I apologize for that, but this is the scenario that we're going through right now um, because again, you just haven't earned it from that person yet. Um, so it may need a little bit more attention than your you know, client who's been there for a year and you've shown up for 51 of the 52 check-ins that they've had that year on time with the punctual, uh, return of, of response and those things that they're going to give you that grace. But that client who's just been there for two or three weeks, you're not going to get the same grace from. Yeah. And I think that like, of course, life happens every once in a while. But I think that also comes with self-awareness of understanding what you have coming up in life. And if you have the capacity to give to someone, especially before accepting their money, it, it, 
at least for me, as I always want to give the best service. And so if I look ahead, and I've done a lot less onboardings this year than I have, and yes, my job has changed and I have less capacity for it, and I'm aware of that, but I look at my schedule and it's like, we have this, this, and this. Can I really give to someone, even if I could onboard them this week, what do the next few weeks look like? And are they going to get what they need out of me because the first few check-ins normally take more time than if someone has been with you for a year because of the dynamic that you're building. And I think that's something that I learned within school because I was very school-driven all growing up is that I knew if I did quality work that when something came up, I was normally going to get grace or the benefit of the doubt. And I loved that. I loved not only doing quality work, but I loved the fact that I got the benefit of the doubt because they knew my work ethic, they knew my quality. And I honestly really struggled with that when I went to college because all these professors and teachers who didn't know me and my work ethic, and it was like getting all new clients and just being like, oh my gosh, life happened. And I don't know how to talk to you and how for you to know that I'm always going to do stuff right. And this is just a crazy time. Um, And so I think that's carried on throughout my life of like, hey, I know that literally if I just put out quality work, someone is normally going to understand and give me the benefit of the doubt, which is a really freeing feeling and reassuring feeling when something does happen of like, hey, I've proven my worth and my work ethic and my character. Like, please understand that this is the scenario. Right. Yeah. And so what else do you feel like within your schedule you've built out or changed or done that's really helped you? Hmm. I think that the, like the sectioning of my efforts, understanding like when I'm best to do said thing Mm -hmm. and being able to put them into those blocks of time and not being like, well, I have to do this. So it's just, you know, now or never type situation. Like I have specific windows, as I talked about within the morning, afternoon and evening scorecard that I know that specific things are best for me to do at that time. Now, there are times that it breaks out of that and it's just, you know, the reality of life, Mm -hmm. of course, but I also uh, try to stay within those boundaries as best as I can and just learning more about yourself and understanding when your brain is the most fresh to do this type of work um, and trying to do it in that window of time, I think is important. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries. We got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box, and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits, as well as home and gym options, complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So can't wait to hear how much you love it. Yeah. And that like brings me back to morning routines as I did copy successful people's morning routines. And I found that my most productive work hours were right when I woke up in the morning. And I was taking this long morning routine and not getting to my desk until like 8 a.m. And that's just like not possible for me, not only within the workload, but just within how I feel best. And I would get there and I would kind of feel like, I've just kind of like chilled all morning. So now I'm not even in the mood to work. Um, And that I even ran into that right when we moved here is we both tried to like start reading in the mornings. And I had like I enjoyed it a ton, but then it put me in not the right headspace for like the rest of the day to be able to really focus on what I needed to. Um, And so I think that, yeah, finding out when you work best and what things work best. So I even shifted of like, I used to have meetings at like nine or 10 a.m. Um, and I've pushed of like the earliest meeting I have is like 11 or noon on most days so that I have the morning because I know how crazy it is and what comes after. Um, and so it really sets me up for success to have that of like no meetings until at least 11 or noon. Um, And then like having a hard cutoff time um, of when those are because I know how long it takes to wrap up and get things ready for the next day, Um, which I would say that's the biggest thing personally for me when it comes to scheduling. And Alex will laugh at this because I first I have ADHD, but I with that I have the ADHD where you are time blind. And so I used to suck at timing and I used to be late to everything. Now I'm still late to some things, but I'm (laughs) 
loads better. And what I used to kind of think is like, okay, if this meeting is eight to nine, then I can have another meeting nine to 10. It's fascinating and to watch happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you can't always do that. And so I've even like gotten to the point of like, I put in a calendar when I'm going to eat and it's not for every meal and it's not every day, but it's on the days where I know that I have like back to back meetings and I've given myself a time slot to eat because I used to like, just go back to back and then be like, I haven't eaten all day. Um, um, and so kind of having little things for yourself that are going to help for where your headspace is at of like, Alex doesn't do that in the calendar, but that doesn't mean that it's not beneficial for me. And I will literally put in there like Susu eat meal. <laughs> and that's just like a time block for me to make time for myself, to not schedule something and to be aware like there's a, a space between this when it comes to travel and not every empty space on your schedule means that you have free time. And I think those were huge realizations for me and recognizing, again, my schedule could look different from someone else's, and it literally only had to serve me. Right. I think that uh, another thing uh, going along with that is that I try, and this is, so if I have good streaks of this, this is when I have the best work of my life. And I do want to also make a, a side note that as we talk through these things, it is not as if we do a perfect job of all these things yeah. every single day. <laughs> it's what we strive to do. And, and I think that many individuals find themselves in a scenario when they go to talk on topics like this, that they feel as though, and I think that this also comes maybe just from like being in the health field where you've got to kind of be a master to be able to teach on some of these things because it's like you have someone's health in your hands. But I think that many individuals feel as though they have to be a master on the topic and have it fully conquered and and never stray from that. And I, th and I think that many individuals don't realize that like there's, I don't think that there's anything that you're just like fully over. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think that, uh, you know, some of those mental battles that you face or, or shortcomings and, and you um, are chasing comfort, it's very easy just to chase the comfort. Like you're just going to have slip ups and you're just trying to find windows of time where you do it better, longer mm -hmm. and have the least slip ups in between those times. Like you're not trying to be perfect. It's just like, can I do this for 10 days in a row? sweet. Can I do it for 20? Can I do it for 30? And if I have a break in there, then so be it. Like, is the break only for one day? Can I minimize it to one day um, and go from there? And so one of the things for me is staying off of my phone until noon every day. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm able to have 5 a.m. to noon, no phone, I'm just focused on the things in front of me. It is such a level of efficiency that I it is mind boggling to me when I do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I can have really good days and, and have weeks where I'm able to do it. Um, today was not one of those. And football season, it makes it 10 times more yeah. challenging for me. I Because I'm checking agree. fantasy, I'm checking scores, I'm doing all that. So it, like my phone is the easiest place for me to do that. I can do it on my computer, mm -hmm. but it's honestly easier for me to do it on my phone. And so <clears throat> the, the simplicity of that makes it more challenging. When it's not football season, it's honestly significantly easier for mm -hmm. me. And so like today being Tuesday and tomorrow being Wednesday, I don't have anything to worry. Like there's no football games. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Waiver wire though. <laughs> <laughs> Waiver wire. Yes. But um, yeah. So being off my phone until noon is a huge help. Yeah. And I think that like figuring out what those pockets are again through trial and error of recognizing like I try to reflect on my week at the end of the week and then some days it's not every day I reflect on my day and how it went and so let's say I try something new within scheduling or it's just like a crazy hectic day I'm able to see okay what was truly able to be accomplished if you were focused the whole entire day and what does that look like for first how many days you can do that in a row because there is a capacity of like, you can't go full throttle 100 days in a row kind of thing. And so recognizing what that flow looks like for you and how you schedule your days. Uh, but it also comes down to like being able to see like this day, I didn't accomplish what I thought I was going to accomplish. Was it due to me not being focused? Was it due to like me being distracted? Was it due to um, like a meeting running late and like you need to be more strict with what times there are if you have a crazy day? Or was it due to like you literally, it was physically incapable for you to accomplish all those things in a day. And so it's so helpful for me to reflect on those days or throughout the week and see like, hey, this was 
like you were efficient every second of the day and you still didn't accomplish what you thought you were going to accomplish, you need to look back at those expectations. You need to look back at what you like can truly get done in a day and be realistic with yourself when you're putting together that next schedule. And what I'll do sometimes within my schedule is I'll be like, okay, this is the chunk that needs to get done. And this is the chunk that I would like to get done if time and I'm going to kind of like see if I can get that done. And so that's normally what I'm talking about um, when I say like things haven't been finished when I leave my desk for the day is like there was still more I wanted to get done, but maybe it truly wasn't possible or I don't have the capacity to do it. And so I will move that ch chunk on to the next day. And it can be something of being like, okay, now you know, like you can't expect yourself to do all of this if you have two meetings or if you have an appointment, if you have to leave the house. And I think we've both gotten better at that when it comes to scheduling is like, if we're leaving the house, we know like we can't add on this and this to our schedule. Um, if we are filming that day or doing the podcast, like we can't also have this um, or we can't have another meeting or whatever it may be. And I think we've gotten really great at that, um, of figuring out what that flow is and what capacity each day holds. Yeah. And, and I'll, um, I'll open up a little bit here and give something that I'm actively working on. Like these are all things that I'm actively working on, but some of them I've conquered better than others and have a, a routine in place and have better consistency with them. This is something that I am like at the ground level on and, um, it's taking a lot of active effort into. And that thing is the, and this is so weird to say out loud, but the addiction to anxiety, mm -hmm. the addiction to anxiety and the badge of honor that I've carried like my whole adult life of I, I thrive under pressure. And I think that the, the addiction to anxiety aspect of things, it's, it's again, weird to say, but I will, I will say that you like the anxiety of, of doing things or the pressure of doing things is a, a big driving force to, to do them type situation. And I want to be in a place where it doesn't matter if I have pressure or not, I'm going to get a great job done, not because the pressure is being applied to me, but because I want to, mm -hmm. because it means that much to me, um, that I want to do the great job and not to say that now I don't feel that way. But I think that I rely a lot on the anxiety of things um, to be able to get them done type situation, to give me that extra push, to give me that fire under my ass to like push forward and, and like, I have to do it now. Like it has to be done right this second. And that's something that within my day-to-day -day schedule that I'm working through, I don't really have like a, a game plan necessarily to, to address it. Um, I think that the aspect of just drawing awareness to it brings down like the power that it may have over me type situation and becoming more aware and identifying when I'm in those scenarios. Um, because I, I know that for myself, like when I have things that are maybe a little bit behind and I'm anxious because I'm like, I have to get this done. I have to get this done. And then when those things are completed, I have that weight kind of drop mm -hmm. off. And then I, I get frustrated with myself of like, well, I don't have the same focus that I did when I was doing the other aspect to this project. Like, this is just as important to me. I care just as much with this, but that fire not being under me anymore puts me in a situation where it's like, all right, time to relax. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a comfort level thing for my brain of like, it craves the anxiety or the, the push. And then once it's gone, it's like, I can finally relax where it's like, I want to detrain that and be in a position where my brain is like, I can relax when I need to relax, mm -hmm. but I need to be focused when I need to be focused and it not being dependent on that anxiety or that extra push from the um, outside pressure or pressure that I'm, uh, you know, placing on myself. I don't want to, I don't want to have to place pressure on myself to do things, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's something that maybe, you know, many of you can resonate with and also want to work towards. And uh, maybe you can give a little bit of, uh, tips yeah, to try and work hello. through that. Cause like I said, I, I don't have a plan to work through it, mm -hmm. but it's something that I want to improve on. Well, thank you for sharing that. I know it's not always easy to share what you're currently working on. And we've talked about of like, we only want to talk about it once it's mastered or once you've accomplished it or you've solved the problem. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, and with that, I think that a big part of that, cause I deal with that as well of like you you wait until you have this anxiety to do the project or like you procrastinate mm -hmm. to a certain degree until you have this like, I'm under pressure, I need to do this. And I used to always say growing up that like, I just work better 
with procrastination. And I think I found out recently, like procrastination can be a very powerful push. Um, but like mentally, I feel a lot better when I just am proactive with things and I'm able to get them done. So I don't have that underlying anxiety sitting on me until it's raised so high that I'm like, I ha I need to put all of my focus and you do get it all done. But then there's that drop off. And then there's like, almost like this, like, revenge situation of like, well, now that I've done it and I just like accomplished this work, like I deserve a break right. kind of thing. And then you get yourself into a situation where kind of like the past check-ins where you're like, I kind of was dilly-dallying for 30 minutes to an hour trying to get it done. And it's like, you're rewarding yourself for getting something done. And then like you're procrastinating to have that push again exactly. and then push into it. Yeah. And I think that there is, I mean, there is years, if not decades of it being trained into my mind that that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the internal work and the awareness, the self-awareness that I'm going to have to continue to call upon as I work to get better with it, it's just, I mean, it's going to take time. I got something that's been trained in my mind um, for potentially decades like it's gonna take a lot of time to work through as well. And I have to give myself a lot of grace because it would be very easy because I'm sure today, probably gonna happen again. It's probably gonna happen. I'm probably gonna, um, you know, things that I, I've got, I've got work to finish. You know, when we're done with this podcast, I've got things to finish right before we film for YouTube. And I know that that anxiousness is gonna, you know, serve me well in that time frame. I'm gonna be very focused. I'm gonna get it all done. And then when I, I should be able to come back to my desk and just work normally when we're done filming for YouTube. Like I should be able to do that. But I know that I'm gonna have like, I can, I can wait till tomorrow. Like I don't have enough pressure on me to do this. And so it'll be, you know, speaking volumes to myself to be able to work through this afternoon and like finish the workday type situation. Just like finish strong, finish focused. That's like the big thing, I think. Do you feel like those breaks when you give them to yourself are actually breaks? No. Okay. That, I mean, that's something for me of like that saying of why I'm battling it's, through it. Yeah. Why it's on my computer of like quality time off leads to quality time on is because I realized that it wasn't actually a break. And that's not to say I still don't do it. Like I still do it. Yeah. But it's, I think that the first step is just awareness and being able to recognize like, this actually isn't a break. Why don't I just get my shit done so that I can take a break that's going to be productive for me? And it is hard to figure out, okay, when is this break productive versus not? That takes time to figure out and trial and error. Um, but I definitely agree that like awareness is one of the first steps there. So I'm excited to see you kind of transform through that as a whole. Well, I can say that scrolling TikTok or Instagram is not a break. Yeah. Yeah, I can, like I can agree I, with that. I can say that with 100%. Now, Instagram and TikTok engaging. Like I'm going through commenting on stuff. I'm DMing people. I'm responding to DMs. Um, I'm actively like using the app. That can be a break to me. Mm -hmm. Like that's like another task that I'm getting done that I wanted to get done. Um, but never do I just want to sit and consume. Mm -hmm. Like very rarely do I want to do that. I'm doing it out of a place of like my mind wanting a break and that is mindless to me. So I do it. And then it, I try to come back to the work and it was that drained me. Mm -hmm. Like my focus is drained. And now I'm just like, especially with, with TikTok and reels, if I sit and consume 20 minutes, 30 minutes of that, then it's like, now my brain is just wanting the constant new. Mm -hmm. It's just wanting something, a new stimulus. And I'm like, you, you just did this to yourself. Like, congratulations, you played yourself and now you've got to get out of this. And you may like, there are times where you just, it's very challenging to pull yourself out of it. And you've got to like, uh, you know, the thing for me, I get frustrated as you guys can tell. Um, <laughs> and then I go on an outdoor walk and kind of just get myself recentered, focus on some breathing patterns. And then from there, I'm able to get back into the you know mindset that I need to be in to like not be seeking that next like stimulus dump type mm -hmm. situation. And it's wild because we haven't specifically talked about it in this way before between you and I. And like I've struggled with this for quite some time mm -hmm. and have like just started to like crawl out of it. That's also why I gave up Tetris. <laughs> I, that's why I've been playing a lot less. Yeah. Um, and that's why like I 
as much as I would love to be on TikTok more, not only because like I think the platform is really cool, mm -hmm. um, but it was taking too much of my time with the other things that are priorities. And I had to recognize like this isn't something that I can personally give time to right this second. And once I had that realization, then I didn't have to feel bad about it or feel any which way. I was just able to focus on the other things I needed to. Um, but a, a huge thing like for me within these circumstances, and I know you've mentioned it as well, is like becoming more organized. Yeah. And that's helped me a ton because like there's times where I get through a day and I'm like, oh, everything's like done. I'm like all, all caught up, all good to go. And I kind of like second guess myself because that hasn't been the norm. And like you said of like, that's been how you've described yourself for so long. And like I had to change my own description of myself of like, oh, you always procrastinate to being like, you don't always have to procrastinate or like that doesn't mean you have to procrastinate to have good work or like you're a procrastinator. And it was changing the label I put on myself because I also used to put on myself like I'm not an organized person. Yeah. And I've tried to like flip that script heavily over the past few months to be like, you can be an organized person to like you are an organized person. And I'm excited to see you go through this because um, I'm going through it as well. And I just know like some of the relief I've already felt. Um, and I'm excited for you to have that for yourself. Yeah, and I think that the the labeling has been very successful for me as well. Um, one thing that it has not been successful for. So I was having good success with different factors of my life and utilizing it and then I try to utilize it for my singing. You know, I'm, I'm not good at singing. And so then I'm like, I'm having success with these affirmations and telling myself that I'm better at things. And then I went through a period of time where I was like, I can sing. I am a singer. I can. You can sing better than me if that makes you feel And better. then I would sing and I'm like, nothing's changed. Um, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Affirmation. Kick in. Affirmation. Um, I have to pee. So we had one more. It's funny because the whole root of why we uh, wanted to record this episode, we haven't even talked about yet of like the, oh. the reason to the, the whole. Yeah. The whole reason Oops. to this was speaking to last night. Um, and we've said this on the podcast a lot when it's episodes of just Sue and I, a lot of these come the night before and we are just sitting down and having conversation after we're done with work and just like, we should end this conversation here and just pick it up on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And what I had said was that there are a lot of things in life and, and I was speaking to the, the work schedule specifically that you have to grow to dislike or hate the opposite of what you're doing type situation to finally do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And that thing was that uh, you know, previously I was, I, we worked seven days a week mm -hmm. for a long time, very long worked time, seven days a week. And that was just like how we did things. Um, and it was a badge of honor, like one of those other badges of honor that's like, dog, no one cares about this besides you. Like there's a few people that think this is impressive, but for the most part, this is a waste of your time. Like you don't need to do it. And so we had to grow to hate working seven days a week. Cause like now I, I literally cannot do it. Mm -mm. Like it is so draining to me and it drives me insane to pull seven day weeks now. Like I just cannot do it. And so I dislike it so much that I have become more organized and, and have uh, approached my day differently, approached the workload that I take on, being more willing to say no to things that I know I can't take on and just like filling my plate for no reason other than just like not wanting the confrontation of saying no to something. Mm -hmm. Um and so I think there's a lot of things in life that you have to grow to dislike the opposite outcome so much that you're just willing to do whatever it takes to do the other thing. Yeah. Um, and that was the whole root of this podcast. <laughs> and I think that comes back to like also figuring out like in trial and error of like you had to try and do seven days a week to realize like that wasn't the answer and to find out what that looked like. And I'll even throw one of your own quotes back at you of like efficiency is created out of necessity. Yeah. And so you had a necessity of like, I can't live like this of having seven days full. Like we were seven days full work days. Yeah. And then we started to have like, okay, Okay, let's have a half day on Sunday. And then it was like trying to push until we could have like a day and a half within the week. And I think that's been a good balance for us the past few weeks or the past few months, however you want to label it, um, of being able to recognize like this is the life that we want to create and what do I have to do to have that life? And so that's led to both of us needing to be more organized, both of us needing to know our limits, our capacity, needing 
to know how to schedule things within our day um, and how to truly make time for ourselves and for each other um, to be able to show up that way. So I think it speaks even more to like trial and error and self-awareness is at the root of all of this to figure out what your dream schedule is and what's going to work best for you and what's going to create what success means to you as well. Do you have anything else? That's all. I know you got a pee, so we'll wrap that. Thanks, guys, for listening or watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, You guys are awesome. And if you guys are enjoying more of the, what would you call this? It's kind of just like hanging out. Yeah, it's a little bit more relaxed. It's not like a definitive topic necessarily. It's kind of we're talking talking about a topic, but it's a little bit more broad as a whole. We're just getting to hang out a little bit more. We're having a little bit more Sue and Alex sharing with our weekends type Mm -hmm. situation. So if you guys are enjoying that, um, let us know in our DMs or in the comment section. And we love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next time.